the West attempted to paint the uprisings as being secular and democratic in nature. Such rhetoric could not be maintained, however, since it was becoming increasingly clear that the call on the Arab street was for nothing other than Islam. The Arab Spring really did mark a turning point in the Muslim world. Before it, the atmosphere was full of fear, and people were just too afraid to challenge the status quo. But all that changed in a very big way, I might add, with these uprisings. The fear disappeared, and people took to the streets for the first time. What happened was that somehow, uh, some way, the call for Islam had to be satisfied since that's what the uprisings were all about. So there arose this brand of moderate Islamism that wasn't completely Islam, it wasn't completely a democracy, and looking back at it now, it was quite an odd mix. The rise of the moderate Islamists was greeted with a mix of celebration and trepidation. Some saw it as the coming of a new age, and others saw it as the same pre-Arab Spring system, only now with new and seemingly Islamic faces. نريد إصلاح الدولة التونسية أما موضوع الخلافة هو موضوع يعني ليس واقعي. Meanwhile, Syria was fighting its own battle with the fall of Bashar al-Assad on the 2000. The Syrian opposition refused to allow any Western, UN, or Arab League interference. They pledged to chart their own destiny, and the West was looking decidedly concerned. We saw the West put their hands into other Arab nations and we saw them try to hijack our revolution, the revolution of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we will not let them stop us and we will continue our revolution until we establish the Khilafah in Syria. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aqru dari al-islami bil-sham, falan narda bi ghayri al-islami hukma, wa sanastamirru fi thawratina hatta nuqim al-khilafat al-islamiya fi Suriya. Takbir! Allahu Akbar! Takbir! Allahu Akbar! Takbir! Allahu Akbar! The declaration of a New Age Caliphate on the end of 2000 on the back of these new uprisings was a major turning point and was the effective culmination of the years of struggle. It was seen by Muslims the world over, not only in the Arab world, as the rightful emergence of their true spiritual and political leadership and was celebrated with scenes of jubilation by Muslims across the globe. Alhamdulillah, with the uprising in the Muslim world leading to establishing the Khilafah, we, we really got what we want, what we were looking for. We're living under the Islamic system now and uh, there's no more democracy, no more secularism, no more fitna. And uh, as a father, this is uh, the most important part for me. Alhamdulillah, it's so beautiful to live in a society where my Muslim sisters are wearing hijab and it's so much more easier for me to fulfill my obligation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, when we heard that the Khilafah was established, we packed our belongings, we packed our lives, and we went back to where we naturally belong. But the West wasn't too pleased with this unexpected turn of events. The United States of America does not recognize any caliphate. We are committed to ensuring that all nations in the regions are safe, and these recent developments threaten the security and sovereignty of those very nations. 
The United States will do all it can to prevent the spread and harmful influence of this extremist state. Radical Islamists that have forcefully taken control of a state cannot and will not be reasoned with. And we will do all in our power, taking no options off the table to make sure that their barbaric ideology is stopped in its tracks. We will not be held hostage by a caliphate that challenges the very basis of our freedoms and civilization. Suddenly, from the uprisings, a powerful new state had emerged and the West found itself facing a direct challenge. There was no question about it. The world was witnessing the end of Western civilization and the rise of a new era under the Islamic Caliphate. 